Well, here's part two. For some reason, I don't know what it is when I do lives on here on my laptop, I get cut off at some point. So all of a sudden it just said, your video has ended. So people can jump back over here and that's going to cause a big old mess now. And I had only been on for 20 minutes. I don't know why it cut me off. <sighs> so, oh good, Christy, you found it over here right away. <laughs> uh, you know, I was mid-sentence and I was like, uh, gone. <laughs> I don't even know what I was talking about there. What was I talking about when I got cut off? Um, well, hello, how do you say your name? Chedra? Saying she's new. And Roll is back too. Good. We've got 97 people on here so far. <laughs> Facebook said not tonight. Yeah. Um, Rachel, what has Kratz been tweet, tweeting about Steven? I don't know. I don't, I don't do Twitter, by the way. I'm never on there. Uh, Stephen Avery Project does have a Twitter, but I have it hooked up to this Facebook page. So anytime I post something on Facebook, it automatically goes on the Twitter. So, um, Twitter's just never been my thing. So, um, but I do know people do share the, the, take screenshots of stuff that Sweaty Sweat Sweat tweets about. Um, is it true that Bobby is missing? Adam, okay, and we discussed this in part one before it cut me off. Um, and no, Bobby is not missing. Uh, Carla already um, uh, answered that in the other one, that all, all that's happened is he deactivated his Facebook because he's getting a lot of threats. So, yeah, Jessica, probably because I said child porn. Hey, girl, hey, to Ashley. Um, you were talking about the pictures on the computer. What, what, okay, I was talking about the, dis oh, the disgusting things that Bobby had on his computer. But now what even was my point that I was going to? See, I ramble and babble on so much that now I don't even know what I was trying to say. Sorry. Um. Oh, that Barbara has to know something. Yeah. So um, she, you know, when he he's looking up the stuff, she knows he looked it up. I know she has and some of the family has when they tried to defend her and try to say anybody could have used that computer. No, it was only Bobby that was there at that time. You know, the computers have the specific times that things were looked up. It was done on weekdays. Everybody else was at work or at school. And he is, he works the night shift. So he's the only one home during the day. It's not Steven going into Barb's trailer. Why would Steven go into Barb's trailer to look up porn or any of these images when he had his own computer and his own internet and Jody was in jail. So it's not like, well, I can't look at this at my house because Jody could walk in at any second. So I'll go do it over here so I could do it in private. Plus, Bobby would be home at that time. So then he's sleeping if anything else. So um, yeah, so you really want to just go there and look up the stuff when somebody's there. So no, it was Bobby who was looking that stuff up. Karen says, how is there even a case when there was no blood in the room where it apparently all happened? Well, it depends which case you're talking about. Because Stephen's case says that he shot her in the garage. In Bobby's case, they raped her, cut her, stabbed her, punched her, cut her hair off all in the bedroom. So all the stuff that Bobby said isn't in um, Stevens. So, um, but yeah, so there's nothing in Stevens' bedroom except the planted key that was found how long later that didn't have Teresa on it at all. In the garage, there's nothing there either except for a shell casing that they found how long later that everything else is dusty except that casing. Um, they'll claim that they like use bleach. You know, we've talked about this before. And that I have said this to Stephen on the phone. He's not a clean guy. You know, there's no way he's going to be able to clean it all up. So, um, Tracy asked, are you in Wisconsin? No, I'm in Illinois. Sorry, now it 
Now that was really creepy. Look at my boobs. Sorry. Um, didn't realize it was going to do that. Um, all right. Isn't Barb an accessory to the crime if she's withholding information? Cindy says. I don't think anybody would prosecute Barb. You know, you would you would have to actively go after her, and I don't think they would. Um, so, um, and then you've got Barb is married to Scott, and it's a law that you don't have to testify against your your spouse. So, um, Sharon is talking. I I can't read the whole thing. Uh, the online petition. Online petitions don't work. Um, you know, we started one a couple years ago called the Juvenile Interrogation Protection Law. Um, but you have to get hundreds of thousands of signatures on a petition for people to even care about it. And Stephen and Brendan's cases are state cases. So only the governor can pardon them. So a petition isn't going to change Scott Walker's mind on anything. Um, but there is an election coming up on November 6th, and Scott Walker and the Attorney General, Brad Schimmel, that were both part, uh, are part of keeping Stephen and Brennan where they are, are um, running for re-election. So if you live in Wisconsin, vote against those two guys, and uh, maybe that would help Stephen and Brendan. But other than that petition, it just, it sadly, it doesn't do anything. And anybody can make a petition. And if the petition isn't done the correct way, it's a mockery. So, mm, no, uh, you know, so I don't suggest a, a petition. Been there, done that. Um, Sarah says, what's the other brother up to these days? Sarah, you'd have to say which brother? An Avery brother, a Dassey brother? Um, how many people do you think is involved? Bobby, Scott, Ryan, police? Yeah, Bobby, Scott. I think Ryan's part of the police being able to plant the RAV4. Or not the police. I need to always correct that. It's the sheriff's department, not the police. Um, then there's the possibility of Scott Blodorn and Michael Halbach being a part of uh, helping the sheriff's department plant the vehicle there. And then you've got Pam Sturm, who took that path of God and was able to find that vehicle right away. So was, you know, how was she told to go there? Because there's no way she just happened to find it like that. Somebody had to tell her where to go. Um, then you have um, Sherry Colhane from the lab. She's absolutely part of this. Then you've got um, Fassbender and Weiger, the interrogators who um, screwed over Brendan along with Len Kaczynski and Michael O'Kelly. All those people should go. Stacy, why won't you address his rap sheet? Whose rap sheet? So you have to tell me whose rap sheet are you talking about? Are you talking about Stevens? So elaborate. Um, Amber says there was a waxy substance in wood found on the bullet. Right. And that's what they believe is that um, a, they just took a, a, a casing that was in the, the garage because people were constantly shooting at stuff around the salvage yard. So they pulled it out and then used her um, Teresa Halbeck's chapstick to put her DNA on it and drop and presto, Stephen's guilty. Um Chris, has there been any additional testing around the key to try to determine if it is the original or spare by the amount of wear and tear on the edges? I don't know about wear and tear, but I know Kathleen has done a bunch of different testing with the key. Um, Crystal, I can't even walk through a room without leaving my hair behind. So we're supposed to believe they cut her hair and police didn't even find exactly. Yep. Yeah, I shed really bad. Um, okay, Stacy, Google Avery's rap sheet. He doused a kitten with gas and threw it in the bonfire. No, he did not. 
he took the blame for somebody else who did it and he was there. He's not the one that threw the cat in a fire. And even if he did, that doesn't mean he murdered Teresa Hobbock. I know people will do the whole killing animals is the first step to becoming a serial killer. But just because you killed an animal doesn't mean you are a killer of, you know, you're moving on to people. So again, Stephen did not, is not the one that threw the cat in the fire. But what he did was wrong. It's bullshit. Um, I wouldn't have sat around while people are messing with a cat and going to throw it in a fire. I'd be pissed and I'd kick somebody's ass. Um, so it's wrong. And um, I'd chew him out for it. But it doesn't mean he murdered Teresa Hallback. Mindy says, do you think the truth will come out eventually? I think it's out. I think we know. Um, it's just a matter of getting a court to hear it. Um, oh, Blaine, sorry. Um, maybe Carla, if she found it to the second part, since I was cut off on the other one, can answer about Blaine. I don't know what Blaine's up to. So maybe she could ask. Uh, Deborah says, oh my God, my ex-son-in-law's name is Scott Walker and he's a griever too. <laughs> um, did Ryan and Scott know each other? If you mean, did Ryan know Scott Taddock? I don't believe so. Um, Michelle says, sorry, Bobby and Ryan. Uh, well, I believe Bobby killed Teresa and Ryan Hillgas helped police get access to the RAV4 when it was abandoned over by the dam and um, so they could move it onto the salvage yard. Um, do you believe that they're going to be freed someday? I do. Um, I do believe they'll be freed someday, but the sad thing is, is that our system is horrible and it could still be a while. Is Stephen and Brendan aware how big this is? I mean, the support, it's huge and how and so much love for them they know but they can't there's no way they can grasp it you know um when i talked to steven the other day i told him his case is the biggest thing ever and i'm like dude this your case is bigger than oj simpson i truly you know and it's because of this whole new time with you know facebook and all that stuff and you know, the, the Netflix thing. And I don't think there'll ever be another case that will get it, get as much as making a murderer did. Um, so, but it's still, you know, they've been in present prison since 2006, um, 2005 to, you know, um, so they're told how big it is and they get lots of letters and they hear, you know, they do get visits from people and letters from people and talk to people on the phone. So I'm sure everybody tells them, but they can't really. Eh, there's, there's my sister texting me saying, watching Making a Murderer 2, didn't you and or Jeff make that design with the dragonfly in the BD? Yep. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, which actually I'm in shorts and I have the tattoo. Um, all right. Do, 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 do. Let's see. From watching the documentary, it could not be more obvious that these guys were framed. Kratz's press release with a detailed story, and now it's scrolled up so I can't read the rest. But, yeah, that thing uh, with Kratz, when he did that press conference to say what he claiming that Brendan said, that's he tampered with the jury pool and nobody does that nobody does that that so that just shows you how desperate he was and i personally think all these things that he's saying brendan did came from his own sick twisted imagination since he's the sexual predator he's yeah so oh and carla says she's here so yeah carla did make it over into this part two thread so you can direct questions directly to carla too um what is feel being filed december 20th i believe it's with the uh, uh, circuit court of appeals um danielle says who does steven think did it i don't i don't think i can answer that sorry but just just 
just know that he's okay with us talking about Scott and Bobby. Um, um, are there personal connections between Link, Fassbender, and Scott, Bobby, which would explain why they would be helping protect them to this extreme? There's a lot of weird connections between judges and cops and all this. I don't remember it all. I keep saying we need to make a family tree thing and, you know, draw all those lines so you can see all those connections, how this one is related to this person and this one's related to this person and this guy owns the competing salvage yard. And, you know, but um, there is the theory that um, since the sheriff's department had stuff on both Bobby and Scott, they were used to do this crime to get them out of having to pay Stephen $36 million. I don't believe that, but it's a theory. Um, I'm amazed Brendan's first lawyer has a law degree. His behavior is very strange and unprofessional. I agree. You know, so I, I don't rip on Len Kuczynski as much as other people because I really think he's like autistic or something. He's really, really weird. Um, you know, just his weird, the way he smiles. I know he's uncomfortable maybe on the camera and all this stuff, but I don't know. He just, he doesn't seem right. Um, is there anything we as the public can do? There's nothing you can do if if you're talking to get them out of prison. That we have to just rely on Kathleen Zellner, who is the best in the business at freeing somebody. And hopefully whatever she's able to do for Steven will then benefit Brendan. Um, but we did talk about before um, how you can help financially with the family, with Steven, uh, with um, his legal defense and with the salvage yard. It's in a pinned post and it's also in a note. So you can refer to that on how you want to help that. Um, how is Brendan, Brendan holding up in prison? Carla can answer that for you. I cannot, I have not spoken to Brendan in two years. So I don't know how Brendan is doing, but um, I know Carla visits him. Um, does Stephen and his family have a P.O. box? Seems a lot of love wants to be sent. You just send it to the um, salvage yard, which we have pinned on the page that you can get the address for the salvage yard, or you can Google Avery salvage yard, and that, it, you know, it'll give it to you. Um, what I really don't understand is the police invo involvement in this. Well, it's... Manitowoc Sheriff's Department, you know, the depositions had begun for um, his $36 million wrongful conviction suit. And um, the, the Sheriff's Department insurance company had already said that they weren't liable for it. And so the individuals were going to be liable for that money themselves. So they had 36 million reasons to make sure Stephen was found guilty of a crime, any crime. Um, Lissy says, are the local community as negative about the case as portrayed in the series or have they got their eyes open? It's 50-50, you know, there's, P, you know, but it seems to me that the people who lean towards Stephen and Brendan are guilty are more vocal and so the people who think innocent are like scared to voice how they feel on it so so while it seems like there's more people there that think guilty i think it's because innocent people stay quiet um okay these are people that carla is replying to um and there's somebody the 36 million reasons um, Amy says, do you think Ryan knows that Bobby and Scott did it when they planted evidence? No, my, I, I always have to do this. My opinion is Ryan thought he was helping frame a guilty man that the sheriff's department, they found that car. 
the the car is locked no key there they're able to get the um they they go to teresa's they're able to get the spare key from ryan and from opening the vehicle they then get the day planner out of there that has Teresa's handwriting on i believe they told ryan um that Stephen did this we don't have enough evidence to prove it and because we're going through this lawsuit with him right now no jury will convict him and so that ryan was desperate at that time to get a guilty man convicted um maybe now these people who know what really happened don't come forward because look at the lengths the law the sheriff's department will go to so maybe you're afraid of what could happen to you if you do come forward but what i would just say to ryan hilgas and scott blodorn and uh michael hallback um go to kathleen kathleen's tough <laughs> she'll protect you um David says, if all else fails, we will have a worldwide parade. And if that don't work, I'll get Ocean 7 to break them out. LOL. I have wrote to Stephen and Brendan, hoping, and now it just scrolled up. I think you were saying hoping for a response. First thing I'm going to say, I'm not going to dog you out for that. His name is Brendan. People get really upset when people refer to him as Brandon. It's a Brendan with an E. It could just be a typo. Um, and I get it. So, but Brendan, his name is Brendan, not Brandon. Um, we do have pin posts on here where you can um, write to Stephen and Brendan. We, you know, Stephen and Brendan like hearing from their supporters. You're not necessarily going to hear back from them. It takes, a, you know, they get a lot of letters. They both have, you know, just because they're in prison, you know, there. When you're in prison, you're not just sitting there doing nothing. You have jobs, you have chores, um, and then you're also dealing with your your case. You know, Stephen does a lot of research on his case in the law library and stuff. So, and then Stephen's not fond of writing. You know, he just doesn't like to write. And yes, he's been burned how many times now by chicks who catfish him. Um, so, but that's not why you're writing to them. You're writing because you want to show them your support, not to get a letter back from them. So, you know, I highly recommend writing to them, telling them where you live and something about yourself. Um, um, Brendan likes to see your pets, you know, so send him a picture of your pets, you know, those kinds of things. So, yeah, please, please write to them. Um, all right, scrolling. I would all like, uh, I would also like to know why his brothers don't visit seems a bit odd. All right. Um, my opinion on Bobby will be guilty conscience. That's my opinion on Bobby and why he doesn't visit. Blaine, as far as I know, Blaine does visit. Um, you know, not every day. You got, you got to realize it's a three-hour drive one way. And it wasn't until I actually started to go visit. I There's two people here in Illinois that I go to visit them in prison where I'm in a Chicago suburb and their prisons are in southern Illinois. So it's about a three-hour drive for me to get down there. And I have degenerative disc disease. So sitting in a car for a long period of time kills my back. And then when you're in the, in the prison, you're sitting on a hard metal chair for those hours that you're there, and then the three-hour drive back. So by the time I get back from a prison visit, my back is horrible. Then you have the cost of gas to go. Then you have, um, here in Illinois, we have tollways, so you're going through all the tolls. And then what you want to do when you're there is uh, the room has a whole bunch of vending machines of all this different food and snacks and drinks and stuff that they don't normally get so and you know they're not the cheapest price things either so you're putting money on this card to, to feed them for the hours you're there so you just can't go all the time 
So I think for Blaine, he goes as much as he can. Um, I don't know about Brian. Um, Brian Dassey, you know, he's got kids. Um, um, so, and then I know from another, one of the other cases that I do, that sometimes siblings don't go because it's very hard on them to go see their sibling in prison like that. Now, that is selfish because like one person I talk to, they're like, they should be put that aside because for me, it would make me feel better, you know, just to see them for that little bit. So, and I'm not saying that's, what's happening in the in with the Dassey boys that's just i'm just throwing that out there on that uh kaz says there's something about teresa's brother that bothers me i think the family know more than they are saying well in my opinion because yeah once upon a time i did think it's because yeah when you see uh ryan hilgas and um uh, uh michael hallback in that scene they look like you you know they know something and then there's also when you look at the the log sheet of people who were ch uh, clocking in and out of the salvage yard when they were doing all these searches, there's Scott Blodorn, Ryan Hilgas, and Michael Halbach going in and out of there. Why are they at an alleged crime scene? What reason do they have to be there? But I think it's because they helped um, get that car because they thought Stephen was guilty. Um, Tia says, I want to know why the blood in the vehicle is a bright red. After blood leaves the body, it oxidizes and dries out very quickly, turning brown and black as it does so. So what the fuck is with the disparity shown in all the, and now it's scrolled up. Yeah, I, I know, isn't that what Kathleen just said that we saw her say in the part two is that she can't do any testing on the blood in the RAV4 because um, she wouldn't be able to determine anything with it after this long a period of time. So, you know, um, I don't know. Um, Carol says, can Brendan be sent a book? Um, I can't remember from Brendan's prison. I know from the ones that I talked to uh, I deal with now, they can be sent a book. It has to be uh, paperback. Um, but there's things on Amazon that, like, they even have because, like, uh, Melissa Kalyazinski, the last time I visited her, she asked me if I would get her some books on dreams because she's having some dreams that she wants to see if she can figure out what they're supposed to mean. And so when I went on Amazon, because I was just looking for books that I would just order and the next time I go to prison, I bring them with, with me. But there is a thing that now when I put in books, it said books for prisoners. So it's right there. So they know it only has to be uh, paperback and all that kind of stuff. And I think they will, Amazon will send it directly to the prison for you. Um, and maybe that's something if Carla is still here, she can answer on it as well. Um, I worry Brendan won't get out if Steven does. Well, Tanya, and we've talked about this before too, another one of Kathleen's cases, Ryan Ferguson, there is a documentary called Dream Killer where um, one guy two years after a murder confesses to police that uh, he dreamed he and Ryan committed this murder. And Ryan was found guilty on that alone. Um, and Kathleen was able to free him eventually, and the other guy is still in prison. So just because Stephen gets freed doesn't mean Brendan walks, but in Ryan Ferguson's case, uh, Kathleen didn't prove who the real killer is. In Stephen's case, there's a good chance she's going to prove what really happened, and that absolutely should help Brendan. But if Steven walks out, it doesn't mean, you know, Brendan's going to walk right out, too. Um, surely to go when Steve gets out, Brendan will, too. Brendan's conviction will immediately be debunked if Steven is exonerated. It will prove 
his confession was false and coerced. Well, but see, not necessarily because there are people who will say, well, I think Stephen's innocent, but Brendan absolutely saw something or knew something. So we all know it was a coerced confession, but it's hard to get that overturned. And so many people never believe that an innocent person would admit guilt for something they didn't do. Um, Kate says, are Stephen's daughters involved in his life? <laughs> uh, oh, I got to answer this message. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Um, all right, sorry. Um, can Stormy says, can we write Stephen and Brendan? Yes, you can. We have pin posts here with their addresses on how you can. Oh, and Carla just answered that one. Um, is Stephen healthy? Every time I, you know, um, he keeps wanting to lose weight and he says w working in the kitchen, you know, he gets really hot and he hopes he can sweat some pounds off. <laughs> so he's as healthy as he can be. Um, Stormy says, do you think Teresa's family could have been paid off? Could have? Sure. Because at this point, I, you know, those sheriffs were desperate. I don't think they were. I really think that they just believed in law enforcement because they have no reason not to. And law enforcement told them Stephen Avery did this. Um, I watched the documentary and I was disappointed with Brendan's attorney's performance at the hearing with all seven judges. Me too. Um, and I really respect Laura Nyrider um i don't know what happened there and you know i was at that hearing and i i yeah i don't know what happened but i agree i don't think she pulled that one off well um kz believes that the blood was planted in the car before it was moved did the police test it and then move the car to frame stephen or did they move the car to frame him and then find test the blood? So, um, so what Kathleen was saying is that the killer, Bobby, had broken to Stephen's trailer. He knew that Stephen's cut had opened again because Stephen had said he had to go inside and retape his finger before they were going to Menards. So Bobby went in got the blood, and he planted it in the RAV4. Then when the uh, Andy Colborn finds it, they can't get a test done in that period of time. Sure, they could get um, uh, Sherry Colhane to lie and say she tested it and it said it was Stephen's blood, but they didn't know at that time what that blood was. You know, but they still just moved it over to the salvage yard because they wanted Stephen to be the one guilty for it. Um, do you think nobody wants to grant an appeal because they know Stephen will win and when he wins, they'll have to go back and re-examine all cases that those officers were involved in? I, I think um, it's again, it's that thin blue line, you know, that you have these people that are covering for each other. And then also, I think it's so stupid that you have to go back to an original judge and get them to change their mind. Um, you know, because how many, if you're a judge, you know, a lot, a lot of times when you're a judge, you, you, you've got an ego, you know, because people are going to listen to your opinion on things and your opinion rules, right? So are you really going to say, yeah, I was wrong on that ruling. Let's flip it. So, um, so I just think they're desperate to keep things as is. And right now they have everything in their control that they can keep it that way. 
So, but that's why Kathleen keeps plugging away. Um, Lena says, I missed the answer to the daughters. As far as I know, Stephen doesn't have any contact with any of his kids. His one daughter, Jennifer, um, I think he hears from her on occasion, but she's got kids and stuff too. Everybody's life goes on. Um, Joshua, if you're asking me if I'm related to Stephen, no, I am not. I own Stephen Avery Project and I'm just a supporter and I talk to Stephen on occasion. Um, um, do you think nobody wants to, oh, so that was just repeating the one I already answered. Heather says, just ordered me a hoodie. Thank you, Heather. Danielle says, they bulldoze Nye Rider. Yep. Sarah says, but the Teresa Hallback family aren't interested in finding out who actually killed their loved one. I'd want to know. I would too. You know, but until they come forward and, you know, say anything, we can only speculate. Um, you know, maybe it's just too painful for them and um, they don't look at anything at all. Um, I personally would have to look at every single shred of everything. Um, and I keep saying, um, and even my boyfriend, not when I do these things, he's like, you say, um, too much. Have the bones been tested to make sure they are Teresa's and not her cousin who passed away at the same time? The swab of the car license plate. Check what kind of trips Teresa's parents and siblings have taken over the years to what destinations. Um, so, and now your thing has scrolled up. No, we don't know for sure those are Teresa's bones. All we know is they test consistent with the female line in Karen Hallback's family. Um, who wrote the 3302 Xander Road and Teresa's phone number? Original framing plan later replaced by an even more convincing one once they found the RAV4, maybe? Ooh, I haven't thought about that Xander Road thing. Yeah. Interesting. Um, do we know what Teresa's family thinks of all this? No, we do not. Do you know if the recordings of the day have been released for them calling in officers to search his property? Because a lot of comms recording hasn't been released. We'll go to stephenaverycase.org. Remember, it's .org. Don't put anything in anything else because that's what guilters try to trick you with. And a lot of the stuff is there. The CASO reports are there. I don't know which ones are missing. Um, Danielle says, if they would have allowed the coroner in to do her job, there would have been a different outcome. That coroner thing. I mean, I knew about it, but now seeing part two and seeing even more of what the coroner had to say, and still my heart breaks for that woman. And the first thing I had said when, you know, Amy and I were sitting here watching it is let's get her some flowers or something. I don't know. I feel horrible of what happened to that woman who was just trying to do her job. Um, Heather says, I wish that, wish Chuck never allowed that cow to search the yard with her daughter. I believe that was Earl that gave the permission and, you know, why wouldn't he, you know, and, it's one of those things that even Stephen, with what happened to him in the Penny Bernstein case, and they're like, we want to talk to you, and he talks to them. You know, so the whole family should be totally suspicious and never talk to cops ever or allow anybody to do anything without a lawyer present, but they just go, eh, you know, innocent, whatever, go look, you know. Um, Barry says, why don't you and Brendan not talk anymore? Because Barb cut off my contact with Brendan, and then lied to Brendan about me. So, um, yeah. Um, so it's sad, you know, but Barb has complete control over Brendan and will tell him who he can talk to and who he can't. So Barb says, I'm bad, and so that means I'm bad in Brendan's eyes. Um, 
oh my gosh, it's going so fast. How do we write to them? I'm in Australia. There is a pin post where the addresses are for you to write to both Stephen and Brendan. And the thing that I always tell people too is, again, they won't necessarily write you back. But in case they are going to write you back on your letter, make sure you have your return address on there as well. This is a prison. The prison will open their letters to make sure what's in there. And they're not going to take care in opening the letter. So your return address in that upper left corner of the envelope could be destroyed and not readable. So write it on your letter as well. Do I know if there will be a season three? No, I do not. But I would think there would be. There's got there, you know, there's so much more of this case. Melinda, why did the man who originally ran this page quit? Because he has a wife and had a young child at that time, and his wife was pregnant with another child, and he wanted to spend his time on his family. And running the Stephen Avery project is a lot of work. We here at Stephen Avery Project, there are six of us. Are there six of us? I think there's six of us. I Yeah, I'm not even. So there are six of us that uh, run this. And all the, the moderators that are here are the same ones that were here when Curtis owned it. So they've stayed on the entire time. Um, Roll says, judge should be fired for misspelling Brendan's name in her decision. Yeah. Um, and then wasn't that somebody else spelled his name wrong, too? I don't remember now. Um, what were the results of Stephen's, uh, that brain fingerprinting thing? Well, Kathleen says that's what, um, she knew from talking to him that he was innocent since Kathleen will only take cases that she knows they're innocent, but that, um, told her for sure that he was innocent. Uh, Michelle and Nate are starting the second half of it tonight. Enjoy or not, because it's frustrating and sad. Um, oh, Ryan also changed his name legally. I just knew he had changed, Ryan Hilgas had changed his name on Facebook. I didn't know he changed his name completely. Um, Katie's, Kate says, do you think uh, the different causes of death will affect either of their chances of getting out at the same time? Well, it's just because they're, di I don't think the different causes of death will. It's just because they're two different cases, period, two different people. And at the end of the day, Brendan confessed and Stephen did not. Um, so, but it makes no sense on how the same person sweaty sweat sweat can try two men for the same crime but completely different scenarios and how that is you know is allowed to happen i don't get it um <laughs> stacy just made pancakes i am starving by the way uh bring me some pancakes uh, Jen is saying her career was ruined for just trying to do her job. That's the coroner that she's referring to. And it's so much worse than than that. You know, you'll, you have to look into the other case. And that's why they they were keeping her out of there. And that it, that case was a boy was walking home at night, hit and run. The kid's laying on the ground. And somebody called it in. The Manitowoc Sheriff's Department was having a party. Somebody rushed to the scene. They ran the kid over again. On accident. And then when the coroner got there, they said to her to make sure her report reflects the boy was already dead when they ran him over. And her answer was, if that's what the tests show, that's what will be reflected in her report. So they knew from that case, she's not going to play ball. She's not going to lie for him. You know, uh, Sherry Colhane lied for them in the Penny Bernston case. So they know she in the lab's going to lie for them again on this one. So, yeah. So who knows all that Manitowoc Sheriff's Department 
has done. Roll says, you don't deserve that, Jax, the Barb stuff. It's worse for Amy um, because Amy got so attached to Brendan because Brendan is so much like Amy's son, Jake. And Jake and Brendan really enjoyed talking to each other. And Jake would go visit Brendan. Um, so it's, it's really hard on Amy that Barb cut Amy off from Brendan. Um, you know, but I'm here regardless, you know, so when Steven's family hates me, I'm still here because I'm here because I believe in Steven's innocence and it doesn't, I'm not here to be liked by anyone. I'm here because I believe what happened to Steven and Brendan was wrong and, you know, whatever I can do to help. Um, reply, reply. James says, I would like to know what would have happened if they had to pay the $36 million to Stephen, who would have lost everything? Well, I, you know, James Lank and Andrew Colborn and um, Peterson, whatever his first name is, that first art. <laughs> Uh, Jeffrey says, don't understand why Barb has control over Brendan when he is a grown adult. Because Brendan has a low IQ. So even though he's 28 years old, his mentality is like a 14-year-old boy. So back when I used to talk to him, he would talk to me about who his favorite Pokemon is. You know, and his mom has always been there for him. His mom has always gone to visit him. He loves his mother. He loves and trusts his mom. So what she says goes. Um, Mary says, that thing with the day planner, that alone should have been enough evidence to get a new trial, period. Absolutely. You know, there's all the proof there that she was writing this stuff throughout the day. So why does Ryan Hilgas have it? He hasn't seen her since the Saturday before when um, uh, it was a family birthday party that he went to. Mm -hmm. Andrea said, is Barb upset because her husband and son are possibly being looked at as suspects now? <laughs> oh, yeah, she's really pissed off. I don't remember. Oh, I okay, somebody already answered what Ryan's name is, Ryan Hill. Um, do you know how Steven's parents are doing? Carla is on here, so I will leave that for Carla to answer. Um, Kate says, I see a lot of doubters post about the family's criminal records, but how can we even trust that if they did this to the boys, you know? Um, yeah, there are a lot of records. Um, you know, a lot of the family have been in trouble, but it doesn't mean that they kill people. Oh, uh, Jillian says, listening to Ken's voice drives me nuts. His voice creeps me out. Oh, he's so gross. Um, April says, how can Stephen's so-called DNA be everywhere, but not, not one drop of Brendan's, especially if he was so-called very involved in rape her right and brendan's you know there's nothing i mean but there's nothing on anything you know there's there brendan is convicted on his confession and when you watch the interrogation you know they told him to say those things the biggest thing of all in there is they're trying to get steven or steven sorry brendan to say what they want him to say but of course he mentally doesn't understand what they're trying to get him to say. So what did you do to her head, Brendan? Cut her hair? Because now, you know, when you listen to, the voice is going up. So that means he's just guessing. You know, he wants to say what, you know, whatever will make this stop. So cut her hair? Okay, okay, what else? Punched her? Cut her throat? And now they've had it because Brendan's not getting it. So, okay, Brendan, I'm just gonna come out and say this. Who shot her in the head? 
Stephen, you know, because, you know, he doesn't want to be thought that he did it. So, of course, he's going to say Stephen did it right away. That should be tossed because you they needed Brendan to say it of his own free will that she was shot. And the reason that is is because they had just found the bullet. So until then, no shooting had occurred in their narrative. Um, so now they need Brendan to say shot because they've got this phony bullet to use. And Brendan didn't understand what they were trying to get him to say. So they said it. Wrong. Yeah, Ryan, uh, Ricky Hackstetler is the name on the case that the, the poor boy that was run over. Um, BB says, I wrote to both of them. Hopefully they enjoy the letters and write back. Thank you for writing them because it really does um, brighten their day. And I know from the other cases that I do that are also um, Kathleen Zellner's cases, Kent Pellegrini and Melissa Kaluzinski, they love, love, love letters because both of them are depressed right now. And those letters to them really help them. And actually the Melissa Kaluzinski case is the only GoFundMe that I support. So if you have it in your heart to donate to Melissa Kaluzinski, who, like Brendan, was forced into confessing to a murder she didn't commit, I know that GoFundMe, and you can Google Kaluzinski GoFundMe, that money goes to the family, and the family desperately needs it. Because just like when you hear in the Avery family, um, her Melissa's father had his own business, and as soon as um, Melissa was um, accused of all this, the landlord of his business kicked him out. Paul, her father, Paul Kaluzinski, has a lot of medical issues. So he can't work. Um, the, the county goes after that family and hurts that family so bad. So it is so hard for them to get down to visit Melissa. So every month they're asking for people to put money in the GoFundMe that will pay for their gas and the food to give to Melissa and the tolls. So please, please, if you can, you know, see it in your hearts to go to the Kaluzinski GoFundMe and, you know, if everybody just gave them $5, it would add up and really severely help the Kaluzinski family. Um, all right, sorry. I know I'm only supposed to talk about Stephen's case here, but I'm, I'm really tight with the Kaluzinski family and I want to help them. Um, Tabitha says, I hope when they get set free, they move away to a big lake house somewhere and live in peace. My heart breaks for that family so much. Stephen won't leave his parents. Um, so if he can get his parents to leave Wisconsin, then they leave. Uh, um, if they don't leave, all Stephen cares about is taking care of his parents. So, um, Mary says, Kratz's voice creeps everyone out. Mm -hmm. um, Roll says, law enforcement promised Bobby to keep quiet about the computer stuff if he testified against Stephen. Yes, that is something that people have said that, you know, because Bobby should be in prison for that stuff, period. And then there was stuff that um, happened with both Scott and Barb that all of a sudden got washed away. So was it a trade? Um, Jillian says, how about Teresa's key? Her DNA is not on that key. It makes no sense. Well, it does make sense. Just the prosecution side makes no sense. What happened with that key is, first of all, it's not her key. It's the valet key. So it's not a key that she used. It's a spare key that she didn't even have on her key ring. They wiped it to make sure there was nothing Teresa on that key because they also wanted to make sure there was nothing else on there. And then they planted Stephen on there. So that's why she's not on there and he is. But then when Kathleen does testing with a RAV4 valet key and has Stephen hold it, let go, hold it, let go, hold it, let go. I think they did it 15 times, nothing transferred. 
Uh, Ken Kratz really deserves to be in jail. Yes, he does. He's a rapist. I'm not a raper. Yes, he is. He's a rapist. Um, April, that bullet was planted big time along with the SUV and the blood. Yep. Robert, why did Stephen buy shackles days before? There were pink, fuzzy sock shackles for him and Jody. So he's not entitled to have a sex life. Um, just because he bought stuff for his sex life with Jody doesn't mean he was planning to murder Teresa Hallback. Because if he was planning to murder Teresa, then why would he call and have it their record that she was going to be there? Because he had her cell phone number. He had her private number that she gave to him. Because also, with people that want to go, she was afraid of Stephen, blah, blah, blah. Then why did she give him her personal cell number? Why? Why did she, why did she give him her personal cell phone number? If you watch part two, you will see that she did this work for, for Auto Trader. If she goes out on an Auto Trader call, she gets paid $8. If she does a hustle shot where she gets this gig on her own, she gets $18. So she would way prefer Stephen to call her personally so she makes the extra $10. So there were times that Stephen called her directly to have her come for cars he was selling. The appointment was called and made because it wasn't his vehicle, it wasn't a salvage yard vehicle, it was Barb's vehicle. So he wasn't trying to cover up that it was his call, it's because the title and everything is in Barb, then Yonda's name. So that's why it's under B Yonda. But when you're going to an address that says Avery Road and she's been there several times, she knew damn well where she was going. She wasn't afraid of him. Oh, I keep going off in these rants. Sorry. Um, Tara says, I'm completely in agreement that they are innocent, but the cuffs and shackles are concerning. No, they're not, Tara, because as I was just saying, it, they were, and it's something that, did KZ say it in uh, part two, or did she just say it in her Twitter Q&A? They're not strong. You could so if you were literally fighting for your life, you would break them. They're sex toys. They're not police grade handcuffs. Then also, there's no marks on the bed from where handcuffs handcuffs would be. If you're fighting for your life and you're being raped and you're being stabbed and you're being punched and you're being stabbed in the stomach, your the metal handcuffs or the metal shackles would scratch that nothing and barb bought those same exact ones barb had those at her trailer so did barb buy them because she planned to kill teresa um mandy says do you have your own theory or you prefer not to say if you're asking me mandy um I've had a theory for a while, and um, a lot of the stuff that Kathleen has said now has goes along with my theory, not trying to say I'm brilliant or anything. Here's what I, maybe I'll say what my, should I say what my original one was? Is Bobby, by all his uh, pervy stuff you see on the computer, and then also Stephen had said that every time Teresa would come, since obviously Bobby is home, since he works a night shift, he would then say to Stephen after Teresa left, oh, your girlfriend was here. So Bobby was always noticing whenever Teresa was there. And also everybody in the family knew she was coming that day because like the Dassey boys were told to clean out the car because somebody was coming to take pictures of it. Everybody knew that Barb's van was for sale and also Boys, Dassey boys were upset about it as well because they had been told at some point that they would get that van to be a vehicle for them to use. Um, so everybody on the salvage yard knew that van was being sold and Teresa was coming that day. All right. So Bobby came a little obsessed with her. So my theory had been that he 
chased her down with the premise of a hustle shot. And then things went from there. And I refuse to speculate on what happened because there's no evidence of anything. So I'm not going to say Bobby raped her. I'm not going to say Bobby shot her or stabbed her or whatever. I have no clue. But I just think Bobby is responsible for whatever happened to her. Then something else I had said at one point, too, is I thought because somebody had reported that they saw Teresa taking picture pictures of a cow on the side of the road. So I'm like, okay, was there an accident? And Bobby accidentally shot her if he was hunting. That was before I knew about the computer stuff. So, um, and, and I thought that uh, in my theory was always that Ryan Hillgoss and Skyhorn helped them, uh, the sheriff's department, plant the vehicle. Um, but I also thought the sheriff's department is who put the blood in there. And I realized, you know, that Kathleen is saying now that it was Bobby who did it and that the blood was planted there before law enforcement. And that makes sense. I never knew what Scott's involvement would be. And I still don't, even with um, uh, Kathleen's recreation. I just know Scott is involved somehow. Um, I always just assumed that he helped after the fact to cover it up because Bobby was the only son of Barb's that Scott got along with because, um, well, they belong to the same hunting club. So, so I believe Bobby killed her and Scott is involved. Um, Lauren says, right. How many girls only carry one key? Well, that's something you can look at too. You can look at Thomas Pierce's testimony. That is um, Teresa's boss at the photography studio. And he talked about how Teresa was paranoid in her keys. Um, and then there's also testimony from her friend that she had gone on vacation with recently about Teresa's paranoia of losing her key, at keys and um, making a fake uh, fob out of like uh, electrical tape or duct tape or something. So, um, and then also it was one of Teresa's sisters that got her the lanyard um, for her keys. So she's not going to keep just one key on a key ring. And as you can see, the, the, the part of the lanyard that was planted is the short part that you, you know, where's the long part? Um, so she would have a house key. She would have a key to the photography studio. And again, that RAV4 key is her um, valet key. It's not the engine key. So, yeah. She wouldn't have just one key on her. Um, Anthony says, what do you think about Len's possible jail, jail time? Um, I've read it just a... Um, I've looked into it just a little bit about his harassment of the clerk. You know, if, if he's guilty, he, for that, he should absolutely go. I think part of me still believes there's something uh, mentally wrong with the guy. Um, so I think he should be his, you know, he should be looked at if, you know, he's a mental case. Um, Kelly, was any jewelry from Teresa found? No. The only thing, um, they, they found a couple rivets of her alleged jeans her, that they said were from Daisy Fuentes' jeans and that one of her sisters had said they were with her when she bought Daisy Fuentes' jeans. Um, Brenda says, Barb set her brother up by selling her van knowing that Teresa would come back and have Bobby watch. Oh, I won't go that far at all. I, I don't think, I, I don't think Barb would do that. Um, Mary says, does anyone know if Bobby and the ex-boyfriend know each other? No, they don't. I wondered if the two of them were in it together, to be honest. No, as far as I know from everything I've seen, there's no connection there. And I looked. Um, Lori says, where is all the blood from Teresa's body? Yeah. 
Um, Tara says, I believe the ex-boyfriend did it and the cops helped him cover up the murder and frame Steve. It was a win-win for them. They wanted to get Avery any way possible, and the ex made it possible for them to do that. Lindsay says, maybe Bobby was those calls that she kept ignoring if he was obsessed with her. Well, didn't uh, Thomas Pierce say that that was Ryan Hilgas? That was the stalking calls? That's what I believe anyway. Alyssa says, about the accidental shooting theory, I thought he was bow hunting. Was he not? Um, I think he was supposed to be bow hunting, right? Because it's not even, I don't think they can hunt deer at that time, right? Deer hunting in Wisconsin is November and that being October 31st. I don't know. I'm not a hunter, so I don't know anything about the different hunting seasons. So, but yeah, I think it was bow hunting. Um, Sherry says, I read somewhere on Facebook that Bobby tried to commit suicide five times since Brendan's conviction. Is there any truth to that? That's just somebody saying it. There's no truth to it that we know. Um, Kelly, her camera must have info. Was it ever found? Kathleen said it was burned. Um, um, Lindsay says, Scott just didn't report it to cops when truck driver called Scott to report it. Right. You know, so... That guy reached out to Scott multiple times to report that vehicle, and he said nothing. That looks very suspicious. Um, Mary says, Bobby killed her, and Scott covered it up. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Jeremy's from Illinois. Yay, Illinois. Oh, and there's people answering about the rifle hunting in Wisconsin. Doesn't open up until the week of Thanksgiving. Thank you. Jen says, Bobby won't go to see Brendan either, will he? He has when his mom makes him. You know, so I think Bobby's gone, like, for Christmas and stuff. Um, Gracie, if I had to pick one thing that exonerates them, it would be the lack of blood on the bed and in the bedroom. Well, again, though, that's only in Brendan's case. Stephen wasn't prosecuted on that. In Stephen's case, he shot her, he allegedly shot her in the garage and then burned her. Crystal, can anyone answer, is Kathleen still representing Steve? I haven't seen all of the second season yet. Yes, she is. Oh, and other people are answering you. Um, Teresa, is Bobby in jail? No. April. Scott didn't even care when the trucker texted about the SUV on the highway facing his house and property that he bought a few days after the trucker saw the SUV. After the trucker reported it to Andy, the next day it was gone. Yep. Katie, get a Twitter. Are you telling me get a Twitter? We have a Twitter. I don't, I don't like Twitter. Um, Susie, has Bobby ever taken a lie detector test? I don't believe so. But lie detector tests are bullshit. They're not admissible in court. They really don't prove anything. A psychopath can pass them. And an uh, innocent person can fail because you're just nervous. So I, you know, so I don't put any stock in lie detector tests. Gracie says the other big problem is a daily planner being back at her house. Correct. Um, scrolling to find question. Why hasn't Bobby visited Brendan in jail? He has. He just doesn't go very often, and I think guilty conscience. Um, people replying. Nathan, Bobby is guilty. That's why he won't visit his brother. Teresa, I feel very bad for it to res for it to resist family. I just want the truth, and I want people to stop lying. Yes. Um, Patrick says, yeah, why isn't the blood a bigger deal? Why? Because the state doesn't care about anything as long as Stephen's in prison. That's all they care about. So they're not going to look at anything else. Um, so that's why nothing's a big deal. They got Stephen where they want him. Um, BB says, I wish someone would just admit it and tell what really happened. Not going to work. Uh, Gracie says, don't forget the ex-boyfriend who erased some of her phone records. Yes, that is also 
very suspicious. I think that might be because maybe there was a call showing she left Avery Salvage. Renee, there was a man who witnessed a RAV4 parked off of the highway before it was found on Avery property. Was this park near where the potential burial site was that the cadaver dogs alerted, but they didn't find any evidence? Yes, that whole, everything is very close together. That Cuss Road, um, the Red Ant uh, uh, um, hunting cabin, the quarry, the salvage yard, they're all very close. And so, yes, it's absolutely where those dogs, which those dogs should be a bigger deal too, that, was it nine dogs? All doing the same path. So why would that be? Nine different dogs, nine different trainers, all going to these same places. Kevin says, Bobby stated in testimony, he went bow hunting. Um, Gracie says, and the guy has texts he sent to Scott. Yeah, I mean, that's huge. Lisa says, I can't believe that some people still think they are guilty with all the evidence that has been shown. Because mm, they're idiots. Um, Emma, do you think Brendan witnessed some do it? Absolutely not. I, I, I stand by this forever. There is no way Brendan would be able to lie about this stuff. No way. He didn't see anything. If he saw something, you'd be able to tell from the way he reacted to things. Brendan is completely innocent and he just got wrapped up in this because he's Stephen's alibi that he was with Stephen that night. So when law enforcement originally started interrogating him, they just wanted Brendan to say something about him seeing Stephen to make sure Stephen was guilty. And since again, that Brendan doesn't get those cues that you know they're trying to feed him, it eventually came into having to make Brendan guilty of it as well is the only way to get it. So it's really sad. It's so tragic for poor Brendan. Uh, Joshua asking again, is it true Bobby Dassey has been arrested or missing according to a thread on Reddit? No, no. Bobby is not missing. He deactivated his Facebook account because he's being threatened. Um, BB says, why isn't Bobby put in jail over what they found on the computer? Because they needed Bobby to get Steven. Bobby was their um, star witness. So that's why they're not going to put him in prison for that. Sarahi so says, I think Barbara didn't think, thought at that time that Brendan could face all what has been through considering he was 16 and low IQ. Yes. Uh, April says, I'm actually related to Avery's cousins, Kim, that's been on Making a Murder. Her son is my cousin. Well, howdy, April. Uh, Brenda, why would someone burn her camera? Because they were burning everything that was hers. And then later, planting in Stephen's burn barrels. Um, Katie Ann, not I was telling the people asking if KZ is representing Stephen. I said... Get a Twitter, LOL, they'll know. Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, Jessica, it's all a bunch of bull. I just wish these two men were set free. Um, Lisa, this is some BS. I'm so angry. They're all corrupt. Marianne, the blood should be a huge deal. It should. Lori, it still boggles me why they didn't call the coroner. What's up with that? Because she won't lie for them. So that's why that coroner had to be kept away from that scene because she won't lie. Christy, is it true X has nurse training? Yes, Ryan Hilgas is a nurse. Uh, Patrick, what can I do living in Nevada to bring more awareness to the issue? Um, keep posting about it. You know, um, look into cases as well in your area. Look into um the Innocence Project and how you can help them. Um, and give Making a Murderer Part 2 good reviews on Rotten Tomatoes as well as um, IMDB, the Internet Movie Database. 
So more of these get made. So Stephen's story and Brendan's story keep coming out and aren't hidden away. Um, Sam says, of course, it would want to burn her camera. It had evidence of where she had been and who knows what else, right? Um, there we go on the, the um, Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, Jillian says, wasn't that her brother possibly who deleted voice messages too? Yeah, he was a part of it. Kayla says, how can they charge both Stephen and Brendan when both murder stories are different? We don't know. And that was something that Kathleen was asked. Kathleen Zellner did a, a live Q&A on her Twitter a couple days ago. We at Stephen Avery Project, we have a photo album that has all of those, all of her tweets. So if you don't have Twitter, you can still read them. And Kathleen said that if people enjoyed that Q&A, she would do more. So if you are on Twitter, go to Kathleen's Twitter and go tell her, do another one. Because it was very interesting. We were hearing stuff we haven't heard before on there. Tia says, why was Steven's second interview done in a cop car? And do you know, and it just scrolled, can I still get it? And do you know, I can't get the rest of your thing. Um, I believe cop car is again another like intimidation thing. It's a power trip thing. Um, Joshua says, is it true? No. Um, yours, that I already read yours. That's the same one. Bobby Dassey is fine. Well, he's not fine. He's sick in the head and a killer, but he's um, not missing or arrested. Jane says, what do you think of the anonymous note that stated a uh, body was burnt in the aluminum smelter where Scott Toddick worked on the 3 a.m. shift where he was working. I believe he did that. And um, it's something that Kathleen talked about in her Q&A the other day when somebody asked, what does sick -a key mean? sick -a key means skinny. Skinny is Scott Toddick's nickname that people at work called him. And then Kathleen has an affidavit from somebody from um, Scott's work, you know, from the payroll department, I believe it was, who said that a lot of the people that worked at night shift with Scott were illiterate. And when she is shown the sick key letter, she can't say beyond a reasonable doubt that's one of the people that worked there, but she said it looks like how they write. So you can see how sick key could be how they ended up spelling skinny. So, because also something else is that Bobby was late to work on that night. So I believe Bobby and Scott got her in a burn barrel to Scott's work that Scott then burned Teresa there. Um, Patrick, wouldn't someone who ran a salvage yard, if guilty, destroy the car? If Stephen burned her body, why wouldn't he burn the car too? There's lots of things that Stephen could have done, all right? So with the car, I've already learned from going to the salvage yard, what you would have done is you would have crushed her car, then put the crushed car inside another vehicle, and then crushed that one. Nobody would ever find it. Gone. Also, where the RAV4 was found, there's that pond there. That pond is deep enough that you could have just submerged the car there. And again, nobody would have found it. Um, then there, the salvage yard is surrounded by quarry. I've driven through the quarry. There's lots of big overgrown grown trees and all this stuff that you could have just driven that car right underneath those trees. People wouldn't have seen that there either. So there's lots of things that could have been done with the car. Gilters were, will say... He didn't have the opportunity to, because when you're going to crush a car, first you're going to gut it. You're going to take out the engine and all that stuff. Um, so he didn't have an opportunity to do that, and he wasn't having an opportunity to use the crusher that people wouldn't see. So if that's the case again, then why would he just park it out in the open in the salvage yard while he was waiting, and then why would he go to Krivitz? So it's like, ooh, I've got this car that I still have to do something with. So what am I going to do? I'm going to leave town. And I'm just going to leave it there. And anybody can find it. So no. And then, yeah, same thing goes with 
a body. You know, if you killed somebody, you know, so why are alleged bone pieces out in the quarry? But then you're finding them right up close to Stephen's house. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to take it somewhere else, to the body somewhere else to burn. And then you're going to take pieces back and you're going to scatter some in, in your, your burn pit. And then you'll scatter some in your burn barrel. Oh, and then you'll scatter some in your sister's burn barrel. Zero cents. Stupid, stupid. Um, Teresa, wonder if someone framed Stephen because he got all that money. Well, he didn't get all that money. He had to settle that one suit to be able to pay for uh, Strang and Beauty. So there was no big payout. But there is the theory people have had is that um, Scott and Bobby would want to frame Stephen for a murder because their stupidity would make them think if Stephen went away, that case would continue on, that lawsuit would continue on, and then they would all get his money and he wouldn't be able to have it. A theory, not mine, but a theory. Um, Shelly. I don't think Bobby is smart enough to get blood from Stephen's house and plant it. Bobby's not dumb, you know. Um, you know, so. And look at all the stuff he likes to Google. Um, how do we write to Stephen? I'd love to send some support. Thank you for the info. We have a pinned post on Stephen Avery Project where you can get it um, that has all the information on how to write to the guys. Um, people are responding to people and I'm just skipping theirs. Um, Mary says, what's the history of the Avery family in the town? Appears they have something against them. My personal opinion, and I know Carla's on here now, and I, you know, I'm not meaning offense to this, but because they are a salvage yard family, country folk, they're looked at as trash, you know, um, where you have people, some people like Stephen, because, you know, nobody ever talks about Stephen's IQ, but Stephen has a low IQ as well. Um, you know, they're not the smartest people. And so people just judge people for the dumbest things. So there's that. Um, Tara says, is it possible that it wasn't Bobby and Scott or the ex and it was all the police? Possible? Yes. But in my opinion, all the evidence is pointing to Bobby. Everything, and that is something Stephen told me prior to part two coming out. He told me part two would explain everything. And to me, part two explains that Bobby did this. April says, someone mentioned an anonymous note about Scott. I haven't heard that. Are you talking, April, are you talking about the Sikiki one? Or is there another one? Um, Ian says, 40 acres and Teresa's relative found it in 10 minutes. That's lucky. Um, I have a video that I have posted on here from when I've been at the salvage yard that I walked from the office to where the RAV was found. It was cold. I believe it was February. So it's cold. You're in open salvage yard too. So it was really windy. And so I was really cold and I was a whiny baby. And so I was walking kind of fast. And um, I'm not, for one, I'm not scared. I had family, prop family permission to be on the property. So, um, Serm of God claims, you know, she was a feared for her life. So, um, so she, you know, is, is scared about that. And you're looking for a car. And she also said she was looking for a body. When I went there, 
you know, it's obviously after Stephen's been in prison for how long. So the salvage yard has suffered ever since. So they don't have near the amount of cars there now that they did then. I wasn't looking in a single car. Uh, you know, so she was allegedly looking for a body. So she went from the office all the way down to a corner, to the very end corner, and started her look there, allegedly, and didn't look at any of the cars she walked along the way. That makes no sense. Nobody would do that. You're not going to go from here, and I'm going to start at this corner. You would have, all those cars you passed, you would have looked at. And so in the time that it took me from the office to where the RAV was, it was, a, for me, it was around 10 minutes, uh, right? I think it was like 12 minutes. And I think for her, it was closer to 20. Is that right? Somebody let me know because, of course, I'm horrible with numbers. Um, so again, no way. No way she went right to there. And also, you have the pond that's there. And so then there's that little road there that the cars were. You don't even necessarily see that. So why would you think, I'm going to go behind this pond and see if something's over there? So wrong. There is no way. <sighs> okay, sorry. I went off a little bit on that. Amber, when do you think he'll be free after the new file on the 20th? It's still going to take a while um, just because you file, the state has, you know, 30 days to respond and there's another 15 days to respond and blah, blah, blah. So, and, you know, as I always go, I'm not a lawyer and I don't pretend to be a lawyer. So I don't know this whole legal processing, but it takes forever. So he won't get out right away. The only way, only way that we can that Stephen gets freed right away is if it's proven who the real person is. That's the only way we'll be able to get him out right away. Going through our, our judicial system just sucks ass. Um, uh, Bob, what was the condition of the key found? Spare sub key. Looks brand new. Um, and we're at 7.48, so I 10 more minutes, and then I'm off of here. Um, Leslie, are you a family member? No, I am not. Um, another lie detector question, because they're not admissible and they don't prove anything. Um, Patrick, please let Mama Avery know how much we all love and adore her. All I can think is I bet Mama Avery can cook a hell of a good Thanksgiving dinner. I did ask Stephen, not when I talked to him this last time, but when I talked to him last week, I said, when you are free, what is the first thing you want of your mom's cooking? Because I said, no matter what people think of their mom's cooking, there's always like one dish that always stands out to them. And he said his mom's chicken and rice. So that's what he wants of, of his mom, chicken and rice. And then I asked, what is something, what is the first thing that he wants to eat? And he wants some really good venison. That's what he's thinking of. And so to tie cases together again, Paul Kaluzinski makes venison. He's got all these different recipes now, and I don't eat that stuff, and Paul keeps trying to get me to eat that. You know, so he makes it spicy, and he makes it with all these different kinds of meats. And blah, 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 blah. Um, so I told Stephen when he's free, I will have Paul Kaluzinski make him some uh, good venison. And then I told Paul, and Paul is excited to make some uh, venison for Stephen. Kara says, when you refer to part two, is there another series? There is Making a Murder. They're now calling the one that just came out last week. They're referring to it as part two. They don't want to call it season two. They're calling it part two. So there's a part one. So the one we saw, you know, in 2016, right? That's when that came out. Or 2015. Was it December? Yeah, it was December of 2015 it came out. That's now what we'll all refer to as 
part one or MAM one. And the one that just came out last week is now MAM two or part two. They're both 10 episodes long. Uh, Marlene says, what do you think about the scratches on Bobby's back? Kathleen has experts that said that those are human fingernail scratches down his back. I do not believe for a second it was from a puppy. So hopefully Teresa got him. Um, okay, replies. Tamara says, why did the boyfriend have her planner? Wouldn't it have been in the vehicle? Correct. It was in the vehicle, but the vehicle was locked and had no engine key and the sheriff's department needed it. And that's where Ryan Hillgas, or now Ryan Hill, comes into play is that Ryan got her spare key and opened up the vehicle for them. And then that's when they had the day planner. Um, Ebony Rose says, how can we send money to Mama and Papa Avery? We've got a note that's posted on Stephen Avery Project and there's a pin post that has all the information on how you can donate to the, to the family, all the approved places. If you don't see it on Stephen Avery Project, don't give that money. There are people trying to take advantage. Um, people's replies. Kiki says, I know this may be unpopular, but what if Brendan saw or overheard Bobby doing something? Nope. You know, I and I understand people will say that, but there's no way Brendan is covering that up. Um, Teresa says, I have a theory. What if Bobby and Scott killed her? They would have had her keys, so maybe they went to her house and put the planner to try and set up her boyfriend and then decided to set up Steven, just a thought. I, I see what you're saying, but you know, I'm, I'm going off of the stuff that uh, Kathleen has released. So no. Um, people replying, Kiefer says, says, so overall, is there any witnesses suspects that went MIA? I'm not sure. Sorry, haven't been able to keep up with everything like I wish. Yes, there. Kathleen still has other witnesses and stuff that we don't know about yet. So you always have to stay tuned. Patrick says, yeah, I want to know that too. I would assume this all has made their businesses business take a hit. Is there any way we can send Mama and Papa Avery some support? Again, we've got a, a, a note and a pin post on how you can um, help the family, get help um, the parents and the yard. Emily, I think Bobby and her ex-boyfriend are mainly involved. Her ex-boyfriend needed to get that to know when Bobby would know when she was coming to Avery's and he could observe to see when she was leaving. When she left, he could have then rang Scott. Yeah. Oh, my. Eyes are so tired, and I, I don't know where my glasses are. I bought readers to try. I need glasses so bad. Mary says, can you send our comments to Stephen? Um, I have told Stephen at times that I could print out this um, post on here and send him. And I did recently just start a thread where I told people, you know, tell who you are or where you're from. So maybe I'll print that out and send that to him. Uh, Chris says, wish someone would throat punch, punch, sweaty, sweat, sweat. He is a snake and a half. Yeah. Yep. And snakes are too skinny. Um, Marlene says, Google about the scratches on his back. He said it was from a puppy, but it totally didn't look like puppy scratches. No. And you can also find it on Stephen Avery case that org. Only use org. The pictures will be there. Janet said, and Pam of God had a direct line to the cops and the phone she got from Ryan, right? No other, nobody else got that. Pam admittedly showed up late to the search party. And for all anybody knew, the, um, the, the yard was the last place she was seen. So, of course, wouldn't that be someplace you were assigning somebody to? Wouldn't that be a place you'd want to go when it's looked at as the last place she was seen? 
But no, Pam of God gets there after everybody else has already left and gone off searching. And so Pam gets the prime real estate to go to the Avery salvage yard and gets a direct line to a Manitowoc Sheriff's Department and a phone to use. Curiouser and curiouser. Kay says, feel so bad for them and hope the ones that set all this BS up. Hope they pay. Sorry, I have a hard time reading now. Hope they pay for what they've done. It sickens me that the ones would go this far because of hate for them and because they didn't do their job right in the rape case and was called out and was going to have to pay. Too bad, guys. You didn't do your job right. Not the Avery's fault. Hey, Amy. Miss you too. And you've come on when I'm four minutes left and then I swear I'm getting off here. I've been on for two hours now and I'm freaking starving. Um, and it's eight o'clock here and you don't even want to know the rest of my weekend. All the stuff I have to do for work is insane. Um, uh, Renee Harrison, could they do the same brain scan lie detector test they did on Steven in MAM2? I'm sure they cost a lot of money and who's going to pay for it. You know, I'm sure if they, if they want to, if they offered it up to Kathleen that, oh yeah, we'll come in and do it. She'd pay for him to have it, but they're not going to do it. And you can't make them do that test. Um, Tanya says, just saw something being made, being convicting a murderer. Yeah. Um, we here at Stephen Avery Project will not be supporting that project, um, that what that piece of crap. Um, that's just the guilter people trying to say guilty. Stephen Avery Project is a support page, and we 100% believe in Stephen and Brendan's innocence. We're not debating that here. It's not up for debate. Yes, people are entitled to their own opinions, but not here. <laughs> if you think Stephen and Brendan are guilty, it's just out there for you. So go discuss it over there. You're not going to discuss it here. Um, so anything that comes out that says guilty, we're not promoting here. We're not plugging here because it is the Stephen Avery Project. We are the biggest making a murderer Facebook page there is. Um, so it pulls a lot of weight. If we plug something here, it gets it gets numbers. Um, we're we're not going to give those any attention because we we don't want them to get any views, any payments, any anything. So we've had that here before because a million and one people want to write books on this case, and then they contact us and tell us that we um, to promote this book. No. I had somebody tell me that Stephen, he's talked to Stephen and Stephen gave his permission and wants Stephen Avery Project to promote his book. No, I don't believe shit anybody tells me unless it comes from Stephen directly or Kathleen. That's it. So, and I don't talk to Stephen regularly. I could go months without hearing from him. He knows when he wants to call me, he can call me. He's called me recently, like the last three weeks. I've talked to him like three times. That's like a lot compared to usually. So when I talked to him the next time, I told him about this guy and he's like, um, am I getting any money off this book? Yeah, right. I'm not. So no. So Steven said, no, don't. And then that guy too then threatened me and called me a nasty word and said he was going to punch me in the face. Um, so we don't promote guilt or stuff here. Um, for the person saying, really want more case info, go to stephenaverycase.org and go look up. All the filings are there. All the evidence are there. All the audio, the video, everything's there. Um, Cindy, what about the t-shirts that are being sold on Unmaking a Murderer? Are they legit? If they're for the salvage yard, that's the only shirt that I will say is legit. If it's any other shirt, no. All we are saying is legit are the Avery Salvage Yard shirts, and we have a note and a um, pinned post that will direct you to that. We will only 
um, plug those. Those are the only things in from talking to Stephen that Stephen has agreed upon that people can send money to. So I am at eight o'clock now. Sorry, there's still 1,200 comments below here that I haven't gotten to yet. I apologize that I can't get to everybody. Um, so um, Kathleen Zellner just tweeted saying, refreshing and novel, a journalist who is reporting the facts, something on Digital Spy. Um, so stay tuned to Stephen Avery Pro Project. This is our public page that I did this on now. Um, so public page, you don't have to like this page to follow this page. Um, then we have Stephen Avery Project, the closed group, where you can talk more in depth about the case. And then um, we've got MAM Gossip, where we really get into the nitty gritty of things. Um, and so I do a lot of the lives that I do in MAM Gossip, because a lot of times we don't want to have this stuff public on here because then the guilters just want to fuck with it. Oh, sorry. I got a potty mouth and I know a lot of people don't appreciate that. And I try to keep on my good language. Um, so, and then of course there's a lot of people here that when we, um, um, start talking about things that aren't just case specific, people get upset because they just want to hear about the case. They don't want to go off on theories and all that stuff. So we do it typically more in MAM gossip, where you have to be a member in there. It is a, a closed group. And so, again, I will leave with the money, which is a big thing on why I started this today. The only things we approve of are the things that are in our pinned post. I now have people that are reporting to me that Carla is posting links and such in here. I don't know what links Carla is sending you to for sure, but we only do the ones that we have listed here. That is the for the shirts for the salvage yard, you know, shirts and sweatshirts and that kind of stuff. Um, the link for that is like some half moon thing then you can send checks or gift cards to Dolores at the salvage yard. Um, preferably a Visa card so she can use it for anything like her medical bills. There is um, Kathleen Zellner where you can donate for the legal defense. And then there's how you can donate directly to Stephen's commissary. Those are the only things Stephen Avery Project approves of if you want to help financially. All right. So um, that then that's it for now. Thank you so much for everybody who tuned in. And um, if you're going to continue to ask questions from here, just know this isn't live. I know the people's questions come up when that time appears when they were doing it so they think it's still live but that's why your questions won't be answered if you have something that you want to talk to me directly on my name is Jax West tag me Jax West and then I'll get notified that you want to talk to me or you can private message me you could also tag Stephen Avery project and any of the admins or moderators here can answer that directly. All right. I am Audi. See ya. <laughs>